wrap it up like Jay Brock. Cause I can score with a second on the clock. What's good, Josh? Your boy Jay Brock is clapping up for LA. You know what I'm saying? I'm right here with the man Z God. What's Come on, deal? man. Z God. It's so many titles. You can't just give him one name. <laughs> Z God, producer, engineer. He has worked with the game amongst many other legends, man. Z God is somebody that, I mean, if, if if you can put him in a bottle, you know what I'm saying? It'll be so much magic potion, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but a genie in the bottle. Look, man, they say Cali. Shout out to Cali and Big Swift, man. They gave him the name Z God because it wasn't nothing he couldn't do. That's a fact. It, it was nothing he couldn't do. Z God, how you doing today, bro? I'm good, bro. How are you? Man, Appreciate you pulling up. Man, it's a pleasure to be able to chop game with you. Um, I, I know you come from you come from out of you come from out of the country, correct? Yeah. Facts. Okay. So speak on what it is to come from where you where exactly are you from for the people who don't know? Yeah. So I was born in uh, Guatemala, city of Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, and I moved here at a super young age. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yeah, definitely, Guatemala. Okay, so do you have, you've been back to Guatemala, right? Um, plenty of times, yeah, okay. I love it out there. T tell me, what is the difference between Guatemala and, and where you are today? Like, are, are the resources the same? Is, is life the same? You know, like, how do people live out there? Yeah, it's different. I, I would say um, life is a lot simpler out there, you know? Um, corporate America, bro, there's like... It, it influences us in uh, in our daily lives, and it and it it becomes clear when you visit other countries and stuff, and and how you see like stuff like branding not matter so much in other countries, and then just how people uh, get by, run their run their businesses, and and not having that influence of, of corporate America, how how different things can be. Yeah, I would say life is a lot simpler. Okay, so it's a, so it's not as stressful because you know out out here where we are, it's fast. Yeah. It's, it's a lot going on. You could miss out on something real quickly. So do you feel like the people of Guatemala ever struggle with as far as like the everyday stress we may struggle with? No, a hundred percent. You know, like that that's gonna be across the world. You feel me? There's good they have their own problems, their own their own issues and things that they deal deal with. Um, what's interesting is I feel like kind of being from here, I feel like there's a lot of room for opportunity in, in places okay. like that. Mm -hmm. Which uh, you know, I, I, a lot of people would say the opposite. People come from other countries, come here for opportunities. But when I've been out there, I'm like, okay, I see how how implementing a little bit of branding or a little mm -hmm. bit of marketing like would be very efficient here. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, yeah. Well, I mean, one thing y'all got to know is, is, is Guatemala, they, they have a goat from out there. Uh, he's <laughs> done some work. Uh, with the great Kend Kendrick Lamar, correct? Oh, facts. Come oh, on God, now. Yeah. Shout him out, man. Don't sleep on Guatemala, man. man. Tell him about that, man. That's the man, the legend, Manny American. Yeah. 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 Oh, shout out shout out to Manny American. You know what? I seen that, that um, he had an event, and you were able to actually uh, get some game from him. Yeah, bro. So early in my in my career, I would try to hit a lot of, like, events, networking things. And, and yeah, Manny being a Guatemalan American, like, was somebody that I kind of was you know, looked up to naturally. Mm -hmm. And so um, whenever I would see that he'd be a panelist or that he's, uh, I mean, his work is incredible too. Like mm -hmm. past the fact that he's also Guatemalan, his work is in incredible. And um, and to learn like, I, to learn like I had loved records before I even knew what mixing was that he had mixed. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Yeah. So any chance I got to go hear him speak or like spit game, I had to like pull up. Yeah, That's dope because like, when when you step into like well when I step into this podcast the world it was people like I have been fans of people I've been listening to their music right and it's like wow now I'm actually sitting next to you now I can actually talk to you like right. it's crazy once you start to really go in the direction that you're supposed to go to in life how those type of doors open so who else has that been for you when you jumped into the game you began to be able to really talk to these people and touch these people who else has that been for you um, as far as like people I've gotten a chance to work with and stuff yeah, like that, yeah. uh, I would say the first internship I got was with a producer by the name of Rodney Jerkins or, okay. or Dark Child. Yeah. Um, I didn't really get to form a, like much of a relationship with him per se. Mm -hmm. You know, I was definitely more entry level, but mm -hmm. being in that environment and seeing how kind of he operates in this industry and stuff, like would say I learned a lot. Being you know? in the same room. Being in the same room, seeing yeah. seeing how he treats people, how that differs, how I treat people, and just you know, like uh, being in a being in a room with someone that's done it. You feel me? Yeah. So, so what did you notice about how he treated people? Um, what I'll say is that I, I 
that's kind of where I first got a glimpse into like people having a persona. Okay. Right. That's what I'll say is like uh, he he presented himself one way. He's known in the industry one way, and then when when it's work time, he's like a different way ah, per se. Okay. And so that's kind of where I. I I picked the that part, like okay, your persona, how you put yourself out there, and how people perceive you is important. Okay, got you. Well, you know, like one of the things that I learned is, you know, a lot of the people that we we look up to, a lot of them are real cool, and then you got a few that's some assholes. You <laughs> that's know what I'm that's saying? For sure. You got a few. You know, like you hear that you hear that thing when they say you don't want to meet your idol. Oh yeah, fast. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever have you ever like kind of went through that? Like you you, <laughs> met, you, you be looking up to this dude and you met him and it was like, ah oh, man. I mean, truthfully, that's kind of how I feel generally over like the music industry in general. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, through that through that internship, I, I a lot of doors opened for me, thankfully, you know, and um, I got to see the industry early on, mm -hmm. right? And then that kind of put me in a position to be like, you know what? There's room for improvement and room for things to be different. And then that's when I kind of stepped out of the major industry per se mm -hmm. and started pursuing like. Uh, more so like an independent independent grind mm -hmm. and then just having been doing that for so long at the same time like it, I started to feel a little bit that way uh, recently like more a little disappointed like all right I'm doing it I'm doing it and I'm not that it, it, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, it, is it that like you, you you expect more you want more because I remember uh, shout out to Chuck Dizzle I was talking to Chuck Dizzle and he was like man you know the thing about this is he was like when you make it to a certain level and you gonna want something else. You know what I'm saying? You just automatically want to keep growing because that's just that's just life. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Fast. So would you say would you say it's something like that? You just like, okay, I need the next thing already. I don't even want to wait. I just wanna to get to the <laughs> next thing. Uh nah, I think uh I think for a long time I had like a vision and an idea. Um and I kinda just believed in in like effort getting me there, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And like in my head it everything would plan out to be the way I imagine it to be yeah, right yeah. and it's just not the case like, it don't go like that things got to be realistic sometimes and then I had to really weigh the, that that thought and be like okay is, is it worth it if I'm not if mm -hmm. it's not becoming this mm -hmm. exactly how I want it to be type mm -hmm. you know it's, yeah I well see I get that because a lot of the time we imagine things always to mm -hmm. go a specific way like the straight path you feel yeah, what I'm yeah. saying but in this life you got to deal with the twists and turns you, I mean, you, you, you're not going to be able to make it if you can't deal with the different twists and turns. But at the same time, that is what's going to show you and everybody else if you are really if you really want what you say you want. Facts. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to deal with the with, with the different uh, punches in the face, the gut shots, the, <laughs> the I'm lost today, I'm confused, I thought it was going to go this way, it's not going that way. You have to be able to deal with that. Yeah, the because, highs and lows. Exactly, because that is what's going to determine how serious and, and your level of greatness in this life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the time, we we we'll come across that and quit, but that's not the answer, man. You have to keep going. So I want to take it back to uh, Eminem, man. Uh, Eminem's first album. Mm -hmm. 1996 Infinity Then he dropped The Slim Shady In 1997 <laughs> yeah. And he came with The Marshall Mathers In 2000 You said Eminem Was, was one of those people That actually really Got you interested Into the music What's your favorite Eminem song? Oh damn Okay so I, Truthfully I, I, I haven't I haven't thought about Eminem records in a while Um Okay let me ask you this I Because 21 Savage 21 Savage said that Eminem is not relevant. What, how do you feel about that type of comment? I mean, I think uh, in a lot of ways the, the world has gotten bigger, you know? Okay. And that's probably true for him. Like, in, in 21 Savage's world, like, he's probably irrelevant. Okay. But Eminem's still selling out the O2 in London, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. Eminem's, still, Eminem's still one of the highest earning artists, you feel ah, me? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you know facts are facts and like yeah. as much as i don't listen to him as much as probably i don't know really anyone that still yeah. listens to him like 
he still got those diehard fans out there, you know. Cause see, I, I mean, I don't listen to Eminem, but mm-hmm. I remember uh, like 2010, he dropped that. Uh, he dropped this project, and he had the song "Seduction" on there. Uh-huh. And uh, I was listening to it for a football game, and it got me super hyped. But like <laughs> you said, he has the core fans, and yeah. that's where we all want to go. You know that Eminem has longevity, bro. Like longevity. Yeah, and for sure. And it, and it can feel like maybe you're not in the spotlight no more, but you know you got. Like like Snoop Dogg, you know, you got like the game. Like they don't necessarily have to be in the spotlight anymore, but they have their core supporters. Facts. And that and and that right there is is the best thing that you could possibly have, bro. And I mean, shout out to Eminem. Um, I don't listen to his music every day, but I I know who Eminem is. <laughs> no, nah, fa- exactly, bro. I, I know who he is. You've bro. definitely heard Eminem records, like, yeah. bro. There's commercials with Eminem records on them, like. Facts. Eminem, Eminem is Eminem. Like. Yeah, facts. And, 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 and let me tell you something. Every time he drops a song, you're going to hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you're going to hear that song. <laughs> That's a fact. Okay, so back to the Eminem's favorite song. Okay, so Eminem's favorite song. Damn, I, I would have to say it'd have to be something early on, like either uh, Marshall Mathers LP. Damn, it's really hard to answer that. Especially, especially not even thinking of the na- the yeah. song song names and stuff. Um, What's the video where he came out as dressed as the superhero? <laughs> uh, is that is it? just dance or something? Some some crazy some, like some, that. Somebody look at me because I feel so empty without <laughs> without you. me. Like that's that. what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fact. Hey man, hey look, you will never. I, I bro, I still to this day, one of the homies. We was in we was in preschool, bro. His dad pulled up playing Eminem every morning. <laughs> and he had, that, still, he had bro, that grip on people. And I still think about that to this day. Like it's one of the memories that I'll never forget. Now, shout out, shout out to Eminem, man. So I want you to take us back to the Mazda, you know what I'm saying? Protege, the two thousand three oh, Mazda, Mazda Protege, game. man. Talk about what the Mazda got you through, bro. The Mazda. Uh the Mazda was like a symbolic I feel like for every guy, like the first car is something like symbolic. No, nah, I had a Nissan. It, but but it meant something to you, yeah, right? Like, exactly. It meant something to you. Like you said, for me, like a Mazda was like the first car I got. Where it's like, okay, this is not a beater. This is not yeah. like just something that you look nice. Get me, get me from point A to point B. Like I could play, put CDs in this shit. Like yeah. before that, bro, my car didn't have no roll up. I had to roll up my windows and no AC type shit. You oh. know what I'm saying? So that that first Mazda was like, okay, I did something for myself. That's like. That that was like essential to me, you know, mm-hmm. something that that um, especially because I'm from Long Beach, bro, and at that time I had to like be driving to Hollywood and Van Nuys mm-hmm. and Calabasas and stuff, like mm-hmm. driving that in that heat, bro, with no AC, like yeah. that's what that meant for me. It was like that Mazda thing, and then it was such a reliable car, like it never let me down. Um, I the only reason I got rid of it is because we got into a car accident with it, but. Mm-hmm. I stayed pretty loyal to Mazda after that. Yeah, fact. Shout out to Mazda, man. Yeah. You know, you know what? When you jump into the adult world, you realize how the quality of the car means more than anything <laughs> else. Yeah, bro. I'm I've had. To tell you. I've had the Beamers. I've had them all, bro. But I'm back to the Mazdas forever. Like that's the one. That's the one that always lasts for sure. So, so what about the maintenance? Because you know the maintenance. You know everybody want a foreign whip, right? That's cool. But can you really afford that maintenance? Six hundred dollars for brakes. The other day, well, not the other day, the last, uh, I had a a BMW SUV, and I had to replace a headlight. That shit was $150 for one headlight. That's ridiculous. I really got to drop $300 right now just so my shits could be even. I'm like, uh, this is the last one. I'm over it. What about the car registration? Um, Truthfully, I don't even know. I don't even pay attention to that. That's just a one-time bill type shit, you know? Yeah. The oil changes and all that will be constant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. facts. I mean, I heard somebody had an Infinity and they had to spend like seven, eight hundred dollars on brake changes, bro. I was like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. So we got to take it to two thousand five. Shout out to Common man. Common sense, you know. Common what I'm saying sense. you didn't know. He drops the album B, and you said you would listen to this song on a daily basis. I was obsessed with how it sounded. So speak on learning why you became obsessed with this it's weird bro at the time i didn't realize it but um now that i could look back on it it was it was definitely the mix that captured me mm-hmm. um if you listen to that intro it's super simple also i i, I really love like a lot of genres of music mm-hmm. and so that song starts off well i, I i'm expecting common right mm-hmm. and then um 
that's that album and the intro starts off with like a very jazzy bass line mm -hmm. uh, upright bass type thing and slowly throughout the record little elements start to come in until common comes in right and so the way that the way that song gets built in and the way those elements start to come in like they're not necessarily just coming in front of you they're coming in something sounds like it's behind you some sounds like it's over here that was the first time i really like grasp that and like realize kind of sound design per se mm -hmm. and so that just would blow my mind like and then it was a it's a really dope record as well like to hear common rapping on like a really jazzy type type thing it's not it wasn't no boom bap drums it was like very natural sounding mm -hmm. drums stuff like it's like okay there's uh there's ways of combining different sounds like jazz and rap and, mm -hmm. and things like that and and yeah that's what would blow my mind just hearing the way the keys come in hearing the way the synths come in and stuff like that it was mm -hmm. like just blew my mind for yeah. sure and it's crazy because i, I can relate to that because i feel like i pay attention to stuff like that mm -hmm. i pay attention to stuff that's that like you said that's coming from over here that's coming from over there yeah. this way that way like i feel like that's what makes the art so i feel like that's what makes the art so special mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's what that's what separates it's, it's levels you Fact. feel me because you can make a straight out flat beat but can you develop the beat that it's coming from all over the world. You feel what I'm saying? Where you can yeah. put the different tunes in. And, and you know, Common is such a smooth artist. You know what I'm saying? Such right. a smooth artist. So, um, shout out to that record, man. So, I mean, to add to that too, like, I think um, part of part of that same thing, you know, like, what makes things special is, like, doing shit that's different and, like, and doing them well. You know, like, regardless of, of the circumstance. So, it, even in the example of Eminem, like, what makes Eminem Eminem is like he was the first like accepted white rapper you mm -hmm. feel me and like he he executed at an, at an elite level and that and it even goes back to like the Beatles like the Beatles uh, a big part of why they're who they are is the things they were doing the ideas they were bringing to life and executing them at, a, at like an elite level yeah facts man shout out to the Beatles you know what the only thing I know about the Beatles is Dom Kennedy saying <laughs> real niggas listen to what do you say real nigga listen to oj's not the beatles or something like that. <laughs> I, was, I was like man oh man and then like another comparison i was thinking about like with eminem you know like on the song what's the difference between me and you mm -hmm. he break it down like it, you know he's not afraid to to be able to go through that with somebody and that's a beautiful thing so i gotta ask you like being so versatile with the music that you listen to on a daily basis how how much of an advantage do you feel like that gives you for your skill set because like you like you said you not only listen to hip hop you can listen to rock you can listen to jazz you can listen you know to different genres yeah, yeah. so how how much how beneficial was that to you uh for me it's like a source of inspiration you know like okay. music is so like vast right so one of the things i've been obsessing over lately is like time signatures so what's that so a lot of our a lot of our songs are in 4/4 time signatures so that's what gives you that 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 tempo right mm -hmm. one two three four two two right okay. so that's a four four time signature a lot of uh, most music especially modern music is in like four four timing mm -hmm. um and i've just been kind of obsessing over like all right how do i make a song that's in five four timing mm -hmm. so meaning there's five beats to one measure mm -hmm. or or in rap we say bars right so five beats to one bar mm -hmm. Or if I want to make a song that's three, four timing, then there's three beats to that bar. Mm -hmm. And like, how do I make those rhythms work and stuff like that? So it, to me, that's that's a lot like a source of inspiration. Like, okay, let me let me see how these guys did a song in five, four. Mm -hmm. Like, let me see how these guys did a song in three, four and kind of learn from that. And mm -hmm. so I think that's where it's very beneficial. And then um, the other thing I've been trying to like explore too is like music that's in different languages. Uh, yeah. So then I have to listen to the music. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And and um, and how the vocal is used as an instrument in different parts of the world and mm -hmm. stuff. And kind of how we influence music as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I know the U.S. influences a lot of like a lot of the music. And um, how do you feel about the the what is that like dance music that's coming out now? Like you know, Drake put out a whole project oh, that yeah, was yeah. just it was a different texture. People Fire. were people were upset. I liked it personally. Fire, bro, that shit yeah. was tight for sure. Yeah. I just think it's tight. Like mu like I said, music is vast, and I don't see why we should be limiting ourselves to be yeah. like, yo, I'm Drake. I gotta make a Drake type record mm -hmm. every time. You know, mm -hmm. even Beyonce did it too, and that shit yeah, was fast. fire. Yeah. Like she did it on some. She did it in her own, her her house music has like her own sound. Yeah, that's right, house music. I'm sorry, I didn't know I said dance music and house music. <laughs> no, I think it is dance yeah. music, but um, but her shit sounds like nothing else. I, I mean, 
there's elements, you know, but it's very much Beyonce's house stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I fuck with all music, bro, like, yeah. especially, like, you gotta consider house comes, EDM and stuff comes after hip-hop, that's the next new, gen- new genre, per se, right? Mm. And just it's cool to see how hip hop is influencing that genre as well. There's a lot of sampling that's being done in EDM now. Fact is EDM uh, that came from Detroit, right? Honestly, I don't know the history you of that. You know like what? That. I think EDM came from Detroit. Um, I just was we was I just had an interview with somebody who was talking about that. Okay, sick. And they were talking about how you like people don't know that it comes from Detroit. I think it comes from Detroit. I could be wrong. <laughs> we gotta fact but check I, that. Yeah, we gotta fact, we gotta fact <laughs> check that. But I think EDM comes from Detroit. Now. You were a photographer, okay? <laughs> One of your favorite. That's a stretch. That's a bit of a stretch. Okay, well, you took pictures. Yeah, okay? I, took, uh, yeah I was an enthusiast. Okay, say that. all right. <laughs> enthusiast. One of your favorite pictures, it was a picture of the back of a bike and a chain and lock. Uh-huh. So when you became a, a, a picture or a photo enthusiast, yeah. what got you started with that? Uh, honestly, bro, like at that time, I was, uh, I would say that started in high school, like, uh-huh closer towards the end of the year i was a terrible student bro i was like never <laughs> never at school trying to ditch you yeah. know like i was a super senior for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. um wait so you did another year i didn't but i was like the senior in the in the freshman classes because i got to make up credits oh, and shit you like that way yeah. behind the credits yeah yeah that was me <laughs> for sure so so i got into it because i picked the easy classes and yeah. one of the easy classes or well, what i thought was the easy classes was photography uh, and uh and I'm thinking it's just going to be a camera, point and shoot. I could bullshit through this, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, okay, we're going to develop film. We're going to, like, do things in the black room and or in the light room and sh- shit like that. And yeah. I, it was actually a pretty cool, cool process. Um, and, like, I, I, I don't know why. I really wanted to get an A. Like, I wanted to do a project where I was like, I got an A, right? Like. And I, I I chased that the whole the whole uh, the whole semester or the whole year, mm-hmm. and that's the picture that got an A. Oh, the wow. one, the picture okay. you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he labeled that the favorite. Yeah, and that was the one that got the A. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I love you know the pictures of downtown LA, the views. Like, yeah. Uh, something about views, bro. They like inspire me. They like I get my that. mind where I'm supposed to be. Like. I don't know, like, you pay attention, I, I take a lot of trips to Runyon Canyon, and I go hiking up there to get to the top of the city and just look at the views. And then it also, like, helps me shoot my motivational videos, just because I, I feel like when I look at those views, it I've always felt like I could impact all these people. That's you know, right. and more, but it always started there, like, you can impact all these people in a certain way to where it, it makes you happy and it feels good. That's so, fire. Yeah, so so that's how I always look at that. And I, I like advise everybody, find that place. You know what I'm saying? Find that place you can go and it can it can just revamp your energy. You know what I'm saying? It can make you feel good. It can make you find yourself. We all have a place in this life and we got to find that and do our best to be able to embrace that. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, we got to talk about, man, Call of Duty, one of the hottest <laughs> games. Yes, one, sir. One of the hottest games. It looked going like, up on Warzone. Man, it, it looked like you had everything from Black Ops 2 to, <laughs> to Call of Duty 2. You know, you had all of that going on. Yeah, man. And you still play Call of Duty. Nah, that's a that's an unfortunate thing, man. I'm oh. I'm trying to get back into the war zone and shit. Yeah. It's changed a lot, you know. And then time, time and everything. At that time, like I said, bro, terrible student. I was collecting video games. <laughs> like I was I was heavy on Call of Duty. I think yeah. I had every copy of every Call of Duty up until probably like 2013 or something. Goodness gracious! Yeah, you was in. Sure. Yeah, I was in there, bro. I for sure dedicated an entire summer to Halo Three once for <laughs> sure. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never got into Halo, bro. Like I, I know that. See, I was a PlayStation guy. Bro. I feel that. I feel yeah. that. See, all my homies had a had an Xbox, um, and so I made the switch. And yeah, bro, Halo is so much fun. Like, so much fun. It, that's when it was like it's a perfect combination. Specifically, Halo Three is like a perfect combination of like simple, yeah. but modern. Yeah. You know, like it's futuristic because of the theme and everything. But yeah. the gameplay and stuff is still pretty simple. And like even the playing field. Wow. Well, shout out, shout out to Halo, man. Oh, Halo, yeah, shout ha- out Halo. Halo had a crazy buzz that I, I, I never will forget. You know, that was a moment in time in life, right there. Halo, shout out to Halo. And so we got to talk about we we, we kind of spoke about it a little bit. We got to talk about these internships. I know we spoke about it off camera, and, and you broke it down to me about how you know you were in it more for the love than yeah. the money. 
And then, you know, shout out to the Mazda because the Mazda kept the food warm when he had to go get the food. You know, it wasn't no Uber no Eats. Cap. It wasn't no Uber Eats. It no was Z cap. God. No It cap. wasn't no Uber Eats. It was Z God. Yeah, bro. When that, that <laughs> when, when it was summer and that no AC was kicking, for sure, they were sending me to get the pizzas. <laughs> like, And it all happened because uh, they sent me to get Burberry one time. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Blizzberry one time. Okay. What's right? that? Like frozen yogurt or something okay. like that. And it was all... Right. And I came back and it was ju- It was milk. Oh, <laughs> and so they're like, what, what happened? I'm like, bro, I just got no AC. They're like, okay, you're on hot food duty now. Ah, like, they, they had the perfect spot for you. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, man. Well, speak on that, man. You know, um, we live in a time of instant gratification. You feel me? We, we live in a time where we want something and we feel like we should have it just like that. We don't live in a time where people... A lot of people realize, well, I was a fool runner for two years, or I couldn't get on the radio. I just stood there, you know, like D. Shaw's DJ Head. He said he answered the phone for Big Boy for two years before he got up on the radio. Mm-hmm. You know, speak on those times and what it, what, what it actually did to you to build your character to be who you are today. Um, I mean, at the time, it was just like, again, I was like a terrible student. I was kind of lost in the world, right? Yeah. And so I was like, I need to do something with my life. Like, mm-hmm. I can't. I can't continue to live like my life in a way where I'm not making progress, right? Like, and so it came a moment where I had to make a decision, like, all right, what am I gonna do? And I, and uh, I actually went to like, I started doing like a business, some kind of business school thing, and then um, I'm like, fuck, bro, like this is a lot of work, but like, so is anything else, right? So then it's just about adjusting your mentality to thinking like, no matter what the goal is to progress Mm -hmm. and in order to progress you got to put the work in and so that's what like kind of motivated me to be like yeah like yeah i'm doing music and it's like yeah first i'm just cleaning up after people and shit like Mm -hmm. that but it's about it's about what at the moment like i I wasn't realizing that i'm learning to operate in the music industry by being around this guy Mm -hmm. but now i could look back and be like yeah it was bullshit that one time i had to wrap every single cable like Mm -hmm. that was whack Mm-hmm. But I don't even think about shit like that. Like I think about like the things that pop in more is like, oh, that one time I got to do this, or this time I got to record that person. Or, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it uh, you get what you you get what you put into it for sure. So you look at it more so with the cup half full, not the cup half empty. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. Realistically, I say that it's it's, it's half full. It's yeah, it's yeah. half. You yeah. know, it's half. Yeah. Whatever, whatever way you want to cut it, and that's yeah. like. And that's the point, you know, it's like, it's halfway, no matter if you want to say it's half empty or half full, it's the mm-hmm. same shit. Like, yeah, fact. just get it done. Or it's it, still there. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, that sounds similar to, uh, shout out to Steve Lobel. Steve Lobel uh, talked about how he was like a, a bag boy for like Jam Master Jam. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Hey, he was, he was doing things like that before he is who he is today. Yeah, bro, you might be doing some bag boy stuff and then like it, it leads to an opportunity that puts Facts. you out of not being a bag boy Facts. no more. You feel me? And yeah. and yeah, if you didn't take, if you didn't swallow your pride and be a bag boy for that one day or that one month or that one year, like that opportunity when it came through. You feel Man, me? and see, that's, that's my thing too. Like, you know, you are one conversation away from changing your entire life. Fact. You feel what I'm saying? One conversation away. And you might be placed in a situation that you feel like isn't ideal for you. But the 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 thing is you want to get into the room. Yeah, you know? man. And, and shit changes all the time, bro. Like, Facts. shit changes all the time. So if you're motivated, if you're, like, inspired right now, like, mm-hmm. don't don't let that inspiration or motivation go. Like, you, it's in you for something. Like, put, put energy behind it. And, mm-hmm. like, it'll return to you. I, I'm a firm believer that. Whatever you put your energy into, that energy is returned to you, for sure. No, that's a fact. Have you? Did you ever have any doubts about that in the midst of, you know, like, where is this going to get me? Um, not really, bro, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Not really. I just kind of had tr- faith in that, you know. That's like, right. I've seen, I, I saw how it was working in my life, and mm-hmm. it's just like, all right, like, if I want to go, if I want to get bigger or want to do this, I just got to go harder. And That's a fact. And that's, the, and that's the only choice you have, like. A lot of the time we be in these situations in life where it's like, okay, what do I do? It's not, it's not getting me nowhere right now, but the only answer is to go harder and not to give up, man. So, you know, Z-God is breaking the game down. <laughs>